All right, YouTube family, it's time. It's time that we take a look at this 2015 Jeep Wrangler with 33-inch tires, 20-inch rims, door handles, light guards, spare tire. It's time that we take a look at this beast that we call Man of Steel. I have bought it doing a YouTube video, an in-depth review, a walkthrough of this Jeep because it's so complicated. I think it's mind blowing. So with that being said, if you have a therapist, if you are an overlander, a camper, or veer, if you have a therapist, call him now. If you don't have a therapist, find one. All right, YouTube family. There's several components to this thing that I put together and you, as usual, I think my ideas are genius. So, with that being said, let's work our way from front to back, I guess, and we'll start with power. So speaking of power, let me open the back door and we're gonna hit these two USB lights. I have the control the on off switch stored here under my roll bar. Boom, one, boom, two. And the switches I can say are right here underneath the roll bar cover. Out of sight, out of mind. They don't interfere with anything and they light up the scene well at night. All right, so. First and foremost for me, it's a bit windy out here today so y'all bear with me. The first source of power is that 12 volt battery actually the first source of power is my jeep battery and i have two the 2015 jeep does not have rear cigarette lighter plugs but i put uh rear cigarette lighter plugs in this thing about a year ago and they're running off the main battery of the jeep and they run they actually charge my camera gear and that's about all I use for those in set, uh, that main battery as an accessory. This is my workhorse. This is the battery that keeps my refrigerator going. I see a little corrosion right there I gotta take care of. This battery is a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery. What I find unique about what I've done here is this battery is not hooked to the Jeep. I use what they call shore power. So when I pull in the garage at night, I plug this thing into the wall and I have a 12 volt, 6 volt battery charger underneath my seat, underneath this, uh, what they call it, the one third seat that I leave up and the refrigerator is in that seat. I have a battery charger underneath that seat and it charges this battery up every night. So when we go camping, this battery is charged, maxed up and it will last four days with the refrigerator on it all right now secondly i have this booster pack or jump starter as i call it this is just a booster and it has one 12 volt socket on it now what i use that for is for me and tanya cell phones when we're in the tent at night or i use it for her fan she likes to have a small uh, 12 volt fan on her at night. So I use that. I take one of those double uh, Connectors I plug that in and That is what we use to charge both our phones at night This thing was about I think about hundred and ten bucks on Amazon and we've owned this thing for years actually this was my son's originally But that's about what it runs on Amazon. I'll leave a link to that in the description below so those are my two sources of internal power. Now, people may ask about fumes from this 12 volt deep cycle battery. 
since I don't, I only charge this thing at night when I'm not in the vehicle. When it's in the garage, I don't think it gives off any fumes that would harm us when I'm in the vehicle because it's not being charged. It's only running the refrigerator. So if I'm wrong, somebody can tell me in the comment section. But I don't think I'm at any risk with that thing being uh, like it is. All right. That is my power sources. During this process of this video, I'm sure we're running the other power things that I have here in the Jeep. But those are my three sources. That booster pack, that battery, and my battery underneath the uh, hood. And I also have a 1,000 watt inverter that I keep in my chuck box. But we're running to that when we get it to, uh, to the chuck box. Alright, the next thing since we're in the area that we're going to discuss is everybody knows about our great dame, Fitzgerald. You've seen him in, pre in uh, uh, numerous videos and I pretty much built this Jeep around Fitzgerald. I knew he was going to be traveling with us. My wife loves him to death. She's not going anywhere without him when it comes to camping or anything of that nature. She would actually fly with him on a plane if she could and have him sit next to her and I sit in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, cabin in the, uh, what do they call it? The area below, but they won't allow that. But so with that being said this is how i travel with fitzgerald the first thing i did if anybody owns an older jeep i think 2018 or back i'm not sure about the newer jeeps there is a gap right here behind that seat when you fold these seats down so what i did was i took a piece of plywood and i think this plywood is 24 by 24 and it's only a quarter inch thick i took it I took this piece of the back of the seat and it just pops off. It has a little rubber channel there that's in the back of the seat. It pops over, open. I took the plywood, stuck it up in the seat. Now, when I get ready to fold this seat up, if I want it to be a passenger seat, I simply stuff this all the way up into the back of the seat. It will slide almost all the way up. Thus, 24 by 24. Actually, I could have made it about 20 by 24, and it would totally disappear into that cushion when I push it up. So, but that covers that gap. So, I pull that back, slide it underneath, and we have for him a dog. You can call that a dog uh, mat. And that mat, I don't know the measurements in it. I think we ordered it from Amazon as well. If I do find it, I'll put that in the description below. That mat fits perfectly in the back of the Jeep, and that's where he sits, that's where he stands, and he is tall enough where, he's just short enough where his back does not hit the top of the Jeep. So that is how Fitzgerald travels with us in a 2015 Jeep. All right, next, here we have his doggy bag. And this is my one of my wife's favorite pictures, a picture of me and him. Uh, hanging out together so she uh ordered this bag from amazon i believe it was or maybe chewy i'll ask her and i'll find out and i'll put that in the description box below but this carries all of his things his food his toys so when we go camping everything plus she has her off in there or actually for him he has uh squeaky toys in there you can hear his chicken right there so that's how we travel with a 150 pound great dane all right, let's move around. Oh, while we're here, right there is our bug zapper. This is a 12 volt, a uh, battery operated actually, battery operated bug zapper and light. So when we're in the tent at night, if any bugs happen to slip in, you can hear that thing going off at night, popping those bugs. And we never get bit by mosquitoes or annoyed by bugs, cause we keep that at the entrance of the uh, tent and it pops them on site. Y'all know about my seats. Uh, those seats are, and matter of fact, I need to update y'all on one of those seats. I ordered two different kinds. I ordered the one that's uh, 230, I'm sorry, 300 pound capacity, I think it is, or 400. I have two of those right here, and both of those work perfectly. But I also bought one that was a little cheaper, and that thing broke on me. But I will we'll address that in a separate review. Right here, you see that I have all my clothes and you know, underwear, shoes, and when I take camping, and I keep a few things in that bag at all times because you never know when a camping trip. Hey! 
All right, my grandkids just stopped by to give me a visit. Uh, they finna go over and play at the park. All right, as I was saying, I keep all my clothes and stuff. I keep clothes and some underwear and socks and shoes in the Jeep at all times. I can get a phone call any moment and say, I'm originally from Georgia. And if I need to go home, I can go home, give Tanya a kiss, and literally be on the road within five minutes of my phone call. That's how I keep this thing always ready to go. Right here, you see I have some of my reflectors. I also have some reflectors stored underneath here in Fitzgerald area as well. And those are my small reflectors that I hang on my side windows. All right. Now, y'all know this is going to be a lengthy video because there's a lot to this thing. Like I said, this Jeep is mind blowing and uh, there's a lot to it. So y'all just bear with me. We can do this thing in sections if you like and not take up so much time. All right. Back to the other side of the, the uh, Jeep. And y'all know about my Apple Cool refrigerator. I take this thing and I'm going to put it right here on the side right here is the milk that I get from the Dollar Tree and this is whole milk and this milk does not have to be refrigerated until it is open so I keep that right there because I don't have room in the refrigerator because right here I have some thin ribeye steaks I got chicken fajitas I got mayo uh, what else I got under there I got hamburgers sausage uh, fish eggs I have jelly I have and this right here is awesome it's called wild weed dipping sauce for shrimp I have sausage I have shrimp uh, jelly uh, water you name it I got this little thing packed this apple cool was a oh it was a lifesaver one of the best purchases I ever made I also right here I keep a cooler but with no ice in it and I usually keep things in it like one of the things I've learned while I've been camping is you have to find things that work if you're going to be out three or four days in order that works for you when it comes to eating and i you i like pickled things like pickled okra pickled beets and so i keep a lot of pickles things in there and until you open them the pickle things like pickled okra or pickled artichoke hearts do not have to be refrigerated until they're open so i keep those right there in this cooler and that cooler like i said is not hooked to uh it doesn't have any ice in it. It just stored it there. And that's the battery charger I was telling y'all about. All right. Let's move to the back. Now, y'all know this is my favorite area. This is my chuck box. But let's talk about some of the things around the chuck box first. This is my bubble growler. And the bubble growler will keep things cold for 80 hours. I've tested that. That's true. What it won't do is keep things hot for 26 hours. I put coffee in it and it kept coffee hot for about 10 hours. That's still good if you have a hot coffee all day long. But who wants to drink 10, 10 12, 20 uh, hour old coffee anyway? So that's the bubble growler. Right there I have my gas. Now the unique thing about this setup, the mind blowing thing about this particular setup is these are fire extinguisher brackets I ordered fire extinguisher brackets they come with these extra large clamps I put the clamps on the big bubble growler and on my gas so now when I'm ready for to use a gas burner or I need a cold sip of water while I'm back here cooking I simply pull the release on the fire extinguisher bracket get my drink out of the big bubble growler or hook up my gas when I'm done I put them back that, in my opinion, and y'all know how I am about my opinion, I think that was genius, and I forget how much those things were, but I will put a, I will put them in the description box below as well. Uh, next, if you're watching in my previous videos, you know about my spice rack, I call it. I simply took a shower curtain, tie wrapped it to my roll bar. I bought some of those bicycle cup holders that attach they simply screw on and tighten with the knob. I put those on the bar and I have my onions, my olive oil, my Tony Saturies, my Dale seasoning, my uh, my Pam olive oil spray and a butane can. And I keep my, and I call it my spice rack. And that's where I keep the majority of my spices. I have a few more spices scattered around other places, but for the most part, that's where I keep my spices. Speaking of fire extinguishers, I also have a fire extinguisher here, but I have the normal 
uh, the I, I put that on with a normal fire extinguisher uh, uh, bracket, so to speak. That's basically just a Velcro bracket that Velcros to my roll bar and then it Velcros the fire extinguisher in place. Right here you see my some of my camera gear, that's my tripod. That is a sprayer, $5 sprayer that came from uh, Harbor Freight. And that sprayer is what I use to wash my dishes with. I simply pump it up, uh, spray my dishes with it, wash them off, wipe them off with a paper towel, put them back in place. All right, what else is going on in here? Uh, right here, this is a dry goods box. This is a toolbox. I think I got this from Lowe's. It simply pops open, and I have dry goods in there. I have cereal. I have some of the uh, the hot uh, uh, noodles. I keep things like that in that box. And what's unique about this is this thing is on my chuck box, which is made of metal. It is a Craftsman toolbox. It is on with three magnets, one in the front, two in the back, and that thing is sturdy. I can almost lose the whole Jeep with that. When I get ready to release it, I gotta pop it up, hold the lid down, ah, pop that up. And you can see, I took three magnets and bolted it, cut, you know, drilled a hole, and bolted it to the, box, to the bottom of this box. And that's where I keep uh, most of my dry goods. And it just simply sits on top of that box. I can open the box and it doesn't interfere as you can see right here I have my Coleman stove I have my coffee pot I have uh, fuel a few things this stuff is delicious it's called sweet and hot mustard by Engel Hoffer love that stuff can't believe it's not butter and here my pride and joy one of my pride and joys is my hot logic portable oven love that thing got three or four videos on that if you're interested you can check them out and I also leave a link to that in, in below right here you'll see i have my spoons forks my scissors uh can opener knives and that is a magnet bar that i bolted onto the toolbox with two screws on each side and i have and these things are magnetized to that magnet I also put a bungee cord across the bottom and two more magnets just to make sure everything stayed in place. I have my spatula. That is hooked on with a magnet. You can see the magnet right there. Boom, there you have it. Uh, this box also came with an, uh, a power strip. So, and this is also hooked to my shore power. And the reason I keep uh, emphasizing shore power, for years I thought people were saying sure power, like sure is hooked up for sure. But it's actually shore power. Boat comes into the harbor, they hook a, a power source up to the ship because you don't want to run that big ship on diesel fuel and burn thousands of dollars worth of fuel. So they did what they call shore power. And they would hook a power source up to the ships to a reserve, uh, conserve fuel. So that's where the term came from. All right, back to the uh, review. That was a little bit of facts from the uh, GED section, as my boy said. All right, the top drawer in this box is kind of my junk drawer. Right here I have my, my uh, coffee, instant coffee, my wife's crush drinks. She, that's the only kind she likes to drink. Uh, ketchup, uh, hot sauce, creamer, equal. That kind of thing. Here, I have some of my hygiene items. I have baby powder, some uh, eye wash vi visine. You know, I have some uh, uh, scope or Listerine, uh, my razor, things of that nature. I got a radio in here, uh, a little power screwdriver, a couple of odds and ends tools, that type thing. So it's pretty much a junk drawer. Drawer number two, that's my skillet or my, or my flat skillet. I have a wash basin right here. I have a battery operated uh, can opener. I also have a video on that thing as well. All right, drawer number three, that's my cast iron drawer. My cast iron frying pan, my cast iron flat pan, a regular uh, frying pan, and this is my sandwich maker. I have a couple of uh, videos on that thing. I love my sandwich maker. Matter of fact, I'm gonna be doing another video on that soon. And right here, I have some plat plates, uh, a couple of odds and ends, some hot sauce, some Vienna sausages, my spice, my multi-spice rack uh, container. It has uh, paprika in it, curry, 
cayenne pepper, garlic, salt, black pepper, salt, the whole nine yards. And this is the 1000 watt power inverter I was telling y'all about. When I'm ready to use that thing, I simply pull it out of the box. I hook it to my Jeep battery, the battery that runs my Jeep. And I uh, let the Jeep run, power whatever I need to power with that thing, coffee pot or something of that nature, which I rarely use it because everything I need is back here. And that's uh, what that's for, but it basically just sits there. All right, uh, next, my water supply. Y'all know I love my water supply. I talk about that in numerous videos. That little thing right there is about 10 bucks on Amazon. You charge it up and you get like hundreds of usages out of it. And that's my water, five uh, gallons of water. That lasts me and Tanya an entire weekend plus some. So we never have to worry about water issues. Right here, I have my two drawer plastic container. And right here, I have her coffee mug. I have another pot, uh, some peanut butter. Uh, and this is my beverage station, actually. This is my coffee filter from when we stay in the cabin. Uh, my gin and juice uh, and some more instant coffee back there. And that is that. All right, right here. And this is another uh, uh, thing of pride for me. This is my table. I took a piece of scrap plywood and I had two hinges. Now where I got these hinges from, I don't know, but the hinges actually have nut plates behind them. So I didn't have to drill a hole. I simply took these hinges, put them up behind the grill louver here, and I screwed in screws. Then I took the screws and screwed them to the drill holes through the plywood, put this in place. So I, the only holes I had to drill in this thing were two tiny holes to put my to put this chain in place on this side. I actually put this chain behind a screw on the hinge for the door. So I had to drill one tiny hole behind this thing to put this table in place. I stuck a magnet right here. That's a, a really one of those really strong magnets from Harbor Freight. I put this piece of metal container, this metal thing on here that kind of screws on. These screws open and close. And that's how I attach the door. That's how it stays up. I attach the bag here. I keep my uh, dollar store bags in there and I use those as trash bags when we're out camping. Now, another thing that I did that I thought was clever. Remember, I mentioned to y'all about the shore power. Well, when we are in a cabin or we are camping, if we have a power source, I need an electrical cord to hook to shore power. That way I don't have to use my reserves, my battery in the Jeep or my external deep cycle battery. So around my spare tire is a 25 foot electrical cord. I simply wrap that thing around that spare tire. It almost fits perfectly. I plug it in right here to itself. And then I put a bungee cord around to secure to make sure it never falls off. And that's how I travel with my electrical cord for my shore, my shore power when we're out camping. I like another one of my ideas that I thought was genius. Another idea that I thought was genius, my neighbor. He is a, one of those guys who likes to tinker. He wells, he builds wood. He had, take, he had taken something for his RV, one of those wheelchair ramps, and he had taken it apart because he only needed the platform. He sold me this thing. He actually gave it to me, but I gave him 60 bucks. And this is what I'm going to hook my, if I can get this thing to unscrew. Let me sit y'all down right here for a second. This is what I'm going to hook my basket to. I have one of those cargo baskets that goes on the back of a vehicle. I took that and peanut, we took that and it goes into your trailer hitch. You put the basket through this hole right here. And now, when I had the basket on, I could not open my door. I could not access my chuck box. Now, I can. This thing will swing out. And imagine the basket's gonna be right there. This thing will swing out. And now I have clear access to my chuck box and everything in the back of the Jeep. Oh, this thing is nice, y'all. I'm telling y'all, uh, Brad from Trail Recon, all of you big Jeeper boys, I know y'all spent thousands of dollars on your Jeep. I spent about six to seven hundred bucks on this Jeep, and I got everything in this freaking Jeep that the big boys got. And I use Brad because he's one of the people that motivated me 
to start this journey and overlanding and uh, kind of pimping out my Jeep. So he's my hero when it comes to overlanding and Jeep modifications. But I'm telling y'all, for six, seven hundred bucks, I think I have everything in my Jeep that those boys have to include. Now, I don't have a rooftop tent or anything of that nature, but just so to exclude a rooftop tent, that's the only thing I don't freaking have in my Jeep that they have. And I still, when all that is said and done, I still can see out my back window. There's nothing inhibiting my, my uh, vision, so to speak. So I still can move around and see everything that they can see. All right, fam, this has been quite a lengthy video. I'm, I missed a couple of things. I have a table right there in the corner that I use. I pull that out when I'm out here camping. I think y'all seen that in a couple of previous videos. Uh, my paper towel holder right here is simply a bungee cord that I hooked into the hole right here. And I hooked it to the, uh, to the spice rack or my shower curtain. And I put my paper towel in there. When that runs low, I simply just unhook my bungee cord, put another roll on there, and I'm back in business. Uh, is there anything else I missed? I got a couple of... Uh, right here, I have another bowl that I use if I need to wash dishes or whatever. I got another bowl here. Right here, I have my recovery gear. This is basically an old leather briefcase. Or I mean a uh, cloth briefcase. In there, I have toe straps. I have some ropes. Uh, all type of thing. But this is basically my recovery gear. So like I said, I got everything the big boys got. I got another pot back here for cooking. Uh, I showed y'all the bug zapper, the reflectives. Up front, I have right there, I have, let's, let's go around. Oh, I almost forgot one of my, another favorite of mine. Behind these two uh, pot holders. Right here is a vent. I really don't know what it's for. I guess an air conditioner or something may come out of that thing. I don't think it does. There's no ducts or anything. But I take this thing and I pop it off. And behind there, all my dishwashing thing. I have a brush, my Dawn dishwashing. I have trash bags, uh, scouring, uh, uh, the scouring pads. Uh, there's you know when you have a small space like a jeep you have to use every inch so right there i have uh all my dishwashing stuff is right there stuffed into this thing the only thing i had to do was these wires were clipped to a little clip up here i simply disconnected that clip pushed the wires up out of my way and there's a ton of space in that door people I almost forgot that, and that's one of my favorites. One of the things that I really found clever that I did to make space in this freaking Jeep. Uh, right here, you see I have a couple of uh, eye hooks, and when I am cooking and I drop this thing down, I simply take the eye hook, I take my towel here, I hang it on the eye hook, that way I have it accessible at all times. Little things like that that I had to do to make sure I had plenty of room in this thing. Uh, right here, I almost forgot about this. I have two chairs, a chair for me and a chair for Tanya. I have an aluminum foil back there and I can simply slide those chairs. Those chairs simply slide out right here. Boom. And we're out in five minutes and ready to go. Uh, I don't know fam, I'm sure I missed a couple of things but this video is headed into 30 minutes and I don't want this to be an hour long video. But like I told you, this thing to me is mind blowing. Right there, I almost forgot about this fan. I also have a battery operated light and fan that I keep stored up here for Tanya. So that's two fans that we have access to. Uh, I could go on and on. I'm sure, like I said, there's some things I missed. Right here, I have Tanya's phone holder. I have her a holder for her tablet. I have my phone holder. That is a GoPro mount that hooks to the uh, the front of the, uh, the hook to the windshield. Right here I have a uh, big cup holders. My wife likes to drink out of Gatorade bottles. So I, I ordered one of those mega cup holders and I'll leave a, uh, uh, I think I got those from Amazon. So I'll leave a link to those in the description box below as well. And like I said, I could go on and on. I'm sure I missed some things in this freaking Jeep. But already this video is 30 minutes long. So we're gonna go ahead and bring it to an end. 
uh, bam, mind blowing. I took 700 bucks and in a, in a future video, I will tell y'all how I got that toolbox for 150 bucks. It had a little bit of damage on it and uh, the service at Lowe's wasn't quite, quite what I thought it was gonna be. And by talking to a manager, I was able to get that box for 150 bucks. All right, fam, let's go ahead and bring this thing in for a landing. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too all over the place and I wasn't rambling, but there's just so many things. So what we'll do in the future, we'll go down and we'll break down each system, the electrical, how I cook, and the whole nine yards, and we'll break it down and to go into more detail. But right now you have an overview of the baddest Jeep, overlanding Jeep on the planet, in my opinion. I put very little money in this thing. There's no holes in it. I can have this whole thing tore apart and broke down within a half hour. And there's only about two holes in this whole doggone Jeep that we uh, put in here. And they're small holes. All right, fam. If y'all enjoyed this video, and this is one of the Wednesday videos about the Jeep or about Overland and about camping, give her a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumb down and a brief reason why in the comment section. And if you love what we're doing here, this and that, consider becoming a subscriber. And if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we drop one of these awesome, 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 didn't mention the fan, awesome videos. It's your boy Rosie. Y'all have a great day, a great week, and a great rest of this 2021. Peace.